When they went in, right, when Joshua, <clears throat> when Joshua took over and Moses died, Joshua and Caleb, I believe, were like the two um, that got to go into the promised land. And so when they went in, um, the Lord told them to drive everybody out, right? Out of, because uh, there was f from the Canaanites, the Anamites, uh, I can't, there's a whole bunch of them. And each tribe, right, out of the, um, each tribe, out of, uh, each tribe of Judah, I guess, each tribe of Israel, um, none of them completely drove everybody out. I think uh, Caleb was the only one who did um, what the Lord inscribed. And so, as they had, uh, as they, I guess you could say, as they kind of settled in and, and got themselves uh, uh, comfortable in their new land, lush land that they were living, the people <clears throat> that they did not drive out, they began to worship their own gods, right? And um, they continued to worship their own gods, and they let them stay on like the edge, you know, kind of at the end of uh, all their properties or whatever you could say. And um, they let them worship their gods there still. They didn't drive them all the way out. And the crazy thing is, is like um, one of the things I was thinking about last week is how these people that they, the Canaanites and all of them, right? They ended up having to deal with these people and being a thorn in their side forever. Because they begin, as we'll see, what begins to happen within one generation, they begin to fall um, fall into sin, um, marrying unbelievers, you know, believers marrying unbelievers. And um, not only that, but they begin to worship their gods, right? That's what they begin to do. And uh, it's pretty crazy because uh, if we look at their own stuff in our own life, when we, uh, I think about when, you know, even saved and how many times after that, when the Lord, I knew specifically was telling me not to do something, or I would not do it maybe... I would pretty much obey him almost the, all the way, but I would leave a little something over here. You know, like when I started taking pain pills, when I was taking them, I was like, they're prescribed, you know, and, and I um, did not address that issue in my life. And I ignored the Lord. I can remember a couple of really times in my mind when I was driving to get them. Uh, you know, I remember the Lord telling me not to, and I just like, it wasn't a big deal. I was like, what? Is this, you know? I justified it in my mind, and from that point on, things began to spiral out of control. And um, it's crazy because it is so easy to do. I think of some of the littlest things I let allowed to go on in my life, how they became like really big things. You know, they, they turned into full-blown sin. So that's what we're going to see with uh, some of the stuff with the judges. It's pretty cool. Um, it's scary, but it, I think it's good for us to look at and see... Um, how some of the stuff that we leave, I guess, unaddressed can become really big things. Because I will, you know, probably deal with pain pills now the rest of my life in some sort of way, you know. When I get older, I'm not going to be able to take them or battle with them. It's just one of those, it's, and it's just from me being in sin. Um, so that's what they did. They compromised at the directions of the Lord, okay. And um, in chapter 2, where did my water go? Chapter 2, verse 1. Let's see. It says, Now the angel of the Lord went up to, um, went up from Gilga to Bochim, and he said, I have brought you up from Egypt and into the land that I swore to give your fathers. And I will never break my covenant with you. Okay, so this is the Lord. The, um, do you remember, like, also the covenant in uh, Deuteronomy that... Um, Moses was going for the people, and he had his prayer, and um, there was a covenant made with the Lord, okay? And um, he says, and you shall make, um, the Lord says, I will make a covenant with you. I will never break it. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land, okay? You shall not, you shall break down their altars. A specific thing. Not only shall you um, not you know, do anything with these people, but you should break down their altars. All right. And um, did they listen? No, of course not. Um, so he says, but you have not obeyed my voice. What is this you have done? So now I say, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall become a thorn in your sides. 
and their gods shall be a snare to you. Is that crazy or what? Because how much of a snare were these gods to them? All, oh my gosh, it never leaves them. It never, ever leads them. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy to think because all the problems that we see from all the rest throughout the Bible, it's all from them not doing simple things at the beginning. God gave them this land. And you would think normally, be like, well, you know what? Yeah, there's some families. I don't want to kill some of these kids or whatever it may be. And, um, but uh, by them not obeying the Lord, horrible things happen, right? And um, so <clears throat> this, is, this is happening, okay? This is really happening to them. Um, <clears throat> okay, so after this, <clears throat> Joshua dies, okay? It says, and the people served the Lord all of these days, all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work that the Lord had done for Israel. All right, and you guys know that Joshua was like in the tent all the time with uh, the Lord and Moses. And um, Joshua was a righteous guy. He, was, he, was a, he loved the Lord. Okay, he lived to be 110. So Joshua dies. There were some other elders. And um, it says that uh, in verse 10, And all that generation also gathered to their fathers. So they all, all had passed away, okay? And there arose another generation. Okay, the next generation that comes, comes on, all right? And what do they do? They arose and um, they, it says, they arose after them who did not know the Lord or the work he had done for Israel. Yeah. So, exactly. They were not teaching their kids. They were not teaching and ingraining this, right? Because amazing things that happened that the Lord did for them should have been passed on to them, you know, in, in a way that, uh, <clears throat> that hey, you know why we're in this land? I mean, this isn't like multiple generations down. This is the, their kids. Yeah. It's crazy, right? And you would think they would have learned because their parents were wandered around the desert and were killed. You know, and so their parents did it. Then they get it, and they they yeah they walk with the Lord. They don't put um uh you know they did not drive all the people out of there. And so there was multiple things that happened, and you know with that next generation how the Lord says that they're going to be a thorn to you. Um, their kids were, you know, not only did they not teach certain things to them, but um you mix that in with the other people and um. Their gods, and you'll see. We'll see exactly what ha happens with them. Okay, and uh, in or verse eleven, it says, "And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and they served the Baals, and they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them um, out of the land of Egypt. They went after other gods." from among the gods of the peoples who were around them. And they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger, and they abounded, abandoned the Lord and served Baals and um, Ashtoreth. And so this, these two gods that they were um, following, right? The, Baal was uh, uh, like, a, I guess, a storm god somewhat, and then the other one um, was a, a god of fertility. And so... You know, all the gods usually involve sex, right? And usually getting loaded. It's just like what we do, except for we just, um, you know, call them addictions, I guess. And uh, back there, they call them gods. Well, my god likes to do this. He likes to get loaded, you know? Almost like, it kind of makes you think of something. Like I was thinking about, um, <clears throat> you know, the, um, the, the, the Mormon church and how messed up and corrupt the... Uh, the belief system, the fact that literally they have um, that, you know, the belief that's put in that they are going to be gods, right? And that they are going to um, have sex and have spiritual babies for eternity and be gods. Like, if that does not stroke the human ego and pride, be a god and have sex forever, I mean, seriously, people are like, yeah, that sounds great, you know? And um, it's insane. It is insane to think about my, you know, because my great grandpa was Mormon. He went from, he was a Catholic and then he became Mormon. And, um, you know, my grandpa, who I was very close with, you know, he, 
he never really, you know, got into Mormonism. He just um, kind of left alone. He was a Christian, but it was, it's sad because, you know, it corrupts so much, you know. Um, the human ego is kind of stroked in that way of, um, to where you can feel okay about this stuff, you know. And so, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, a, it's a bad thing. And the one sense it is a, I really believe that, um, you know, God's grace to us um, is the fact that we do not have everyone who is in the Mormon church infiltrating Christianity. You know what I mean? So if they were in it, there'd be that much more sheep and wolves clothing, so to speak. You know, so in a way, with these other religion, we can kind of see um, already the church is messed up enough. Imagine if they weren't these other religions from Jehovah's Witnesses to, um, you know, Muslim to Church of Scientology to all these different things that where we could say, okay, yeah, I know you, you know, they can even speak the same type of words, but there's a different meaning behind them, right? You know, their Jesus is not the same Jesus that we worship. Our Jesus is God. Yeah. So, okay. And, um, okay, so they get on to this, right? And, and so what they do, they start off in, um, they start off just by compromising, all right? And they, they, they put the people on the edge, uh, edge and um, they do not destroy the high places after they do not kick them out. And it ends up becoming disastrous for their children, disastrous, and for their generations and generations to come. So in James, I want to look at a little bit in James, just because I think it goes r really right with the stuff that it's talking about in here. Um, how stuff snowballs, you know, and um, to me, I was just thinking of just how I've compromised stuff that the Lord has said, and it has snowballed into full-blown sin. So in James chapter 1, yeah, James chapter 1, <clears throat> verse, uh, verse 12. This should be, um, <clears throat> this book of Judges should, um, as we go into it, <clears throat> should kind of scare us straight in a, in a certain sense of like the little things in our lives, you know, that, um, that we will kind of let go, you know. And I know there's things in my life that I can think of right now that could become, you know, just from bad habits, you know what I mean? Of certain things that can get bad and uh, grow out of control if we don't address them. <clears throat> and so it says in verse 12, chapter 1 of James, um, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. <clears throat> which is awesome. You know, when <clears throat> the stuff we go through on and off through life, um, I can think in my life that, um, you know, the blessed reward of spending eternity with our Lord and Savior, who has given for itself for us, we don't have to be afraid of death. You know, I talked to my my grandpa today, he's my step-grandfather who's married to my um, grandma, and he, hospice has come to his house and stuff. You know, he's over in Grants Pass, Oregon, and he's not doing well. They don't know how much longer he has. And, um, but I talked with him today, and, and it's just so amazing how um, calm and talking about the Lord. I mean, he was happy. He was like, he is in super happy. Talking about the weather and the coast and random, random things, and... Um, you know, their pastor was co had, was coming by, talking with them. And it's awesome to see that because, you know, there is no fear of the Lord. You know, I think of um, Donna's son, uh, Patrick, talking to him. He works at the um, hospice um, or, I guess, a convalescent home kind of up in Emmett. And he was just saying that the difference between the people who died without the Lord and the people that were Christians who died and how they would almost just let go of their spirit and just be fine rather than um, having... You know, I guess just kind of being pissed off and things just happening. Like he was just saying there was a big difference when I was talking to him. You know, and he even um, just noticed that even, um, you know, before he is, was a Christian, he's worked it for a while. And um, it's pretty cool to see that stuff. Isn't I mean, yeah. I mean, because you think to where, you know, the Garden of Eden and how that was made for us and how. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't got to fool ourselves and into um, believing that, you know, well, there's going to be something and I'm going to be this or that. We know because we have the word, you know, and it's a promise. And so um, in verse 
13. Uh, it says, Let no one say when he is when he is tempted that I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he tempts himself. He, he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured away and enticed by his own desire. All right? And th that is very true because we... It does not take very much to entice us, right? The flesh. And it says, Then the desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings death. Right? It's a, a process that we can pretty much <laughs> see. Like when, um, for using, when that stuff comes into mind, or, or random stuff. When I have slipped and fall, it's because it's something that I played with in my mind. Rather than praying, going before the Lord, you know, before the throne of grace, you know, and, uh, getting mercy in our time of need, we play with it, you know, and it's just so easy um, because when we play with it off and on, there's somehow it always seems to come available or whatever it is or other things in our life. Yeah. And. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Holding our thoughts captive is one of the hardest things to do, but once we start doing it and being trained by it, it is so amazing. Because there's something about when you do not give in, right? You do not use, and you go to the Lord, and you end up spending time with the Lord and growing in Him, rather than going and using and being like, oh man, I did this, and we don't have fun anyways at this point, because we're going, yeah, when, we're, when we turn to sin, when we're the Lord's, it is not fun, you know? It's fun for a moment, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, I mean, um, I really think, too, that there's so much. Uh, man, we do not even have any idea what the Lord can do through us when we begin to hold our thoughts captive. Because that stops so much stuff. And <clears throat> we become, if we can become trained by it. Like, I, one of the things I think of is... Um, like, um, I need to be doing more uh, studies with my family, right? And, and, and the evenings. And um, even though by sitting down and, and doing whatever and hanging out, if I'm not doing studies, that is still um, kind of falling into sin in a way because looking at what happened to the, with them, you know, like their children were, they fell into false idols. They end up turning and doing what was evil, Right? And they even have the stories. You know that they heard the stories of what the Lord did, this and that. And yet they still went ahead and, you know, f served false gods. Oh, you know? Yeah. Well, and, you know, it's with our kids, We, I think it's, it's something that's very important to uh, do. Um, in verse... Uh, Let's see. In verse, where am I? Desired. Okay, so in verse uh, 16, there we are. It says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Do not be deceived. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own, he will. Of his own, will he brought brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Oh, wow, this is the verse 119. Know, know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Okay, so that thing right there, being slow to speak, and. Um, listening and, and being slow to anger that is part of like holding our thoughts captive you know because i <laughs> when um i just react when some if someone when somebody calls me like from a builder or whatever it is um like me and tim are talking it is if we just react and say stuff and and do things there's stuff that <laughs> we fall into sin you know it's very very easy to fall into sin in verse 20 it says the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. For the anger of man does not produce 
the righteousness of God. You know, and when we re react um, to things, it is so easy because our flesh is the one that always wants to be um, it's satisfied, right? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So whether it's um, using or doing um, whatever it is, you know, as we fall into sin, a lot of times, uh, if we are not holding our thoughts captive, we... Even if we don't use, we're thinking about using off and on, and I end up getting, I'm just a pissed off person. You know, when I am not seeking the Lord and when uh, my thoughts are just uh, running wild and I'm like not using because maybe I just can't or whatever it is, you still end up falling back, right? It's a heart issue. Like the, um, one of the things, I think it was Sunday that um, we talked about was, um, you know, the, the Puritans talked about the, the man who, you know, had a, a job. He had, um, uh, was good statutes in society, like a good standing in society. Um, he, you know, had a family. They, um, you know, were just all around good. Kind of like, the, you know, a Pharisee type of way. The outside was, the outside of the cup was nice and polished. And the, um, the Puritans preached against this person that these person, that, that these type of people, right, were in <laughs> severe danger of God's, God's wrath because um, it's easy to go around and to um, be doing stuff and have to be able to have that. Well, you know what? I don't use. I don't do this. I don't do that. You know, I'm not. I haven't been to prison. I haven't done this. And it's so easy to fall into that standing when um, with the thing is that they don't realize the heart issue, right? All the stuff that they... Um, think about doing and maybe they don't or even like an AA right so you get the people that are just always pissed off and um, really angry and um, they might not be using for 15 years but I'd rather be around someone who hasn't used for six months that's um, you know um, going before the Lord and just happy you know because it's so easy to um, fall into that type of uh, thing and you know when we uh, when we actually struggle with these things, um, we know, right, that we are messed up. Most of us know that we, um, pretty much that we are not worthy to stand in front of the Lord or to do anything. We know that we're messed up. And that's what we looked at on Sunday was the wedding feast. <clears throat> that <clears throat> Jesus um, told the parable of the wedding feast, how, you know, um, basically, you know, this... Uh, the king had, had sent out people into the uh, um, street to go call people to the wedding, and no one came. They went to their job. They went to here. They ignored them. And even afterwards, they actually um, beat up and tortured some of his servants. And um, then finally he says, you know, just go call anybody. And, and he goes in the streets, and he says he called good and bad, you know. And that right there demolishes the... Um, fact that good people get to heaven right because he says he called the good and bad so the thing is is even with um the disciples the apostles people we look at they're all messed up they're all messed up um and it's pretty um it's pretty scary like how when the puritans uh i wish i could it was kind of around that church around the new england when they when they came over and um beginning of their colonies as it was getting going there was a lot of people that were um, you know, from politicians, from whoever that were, you know, good people in the eyes of, um, in the eyes of everybody, the stuff that they did. Yeah. In front of society. Yeah. And, and what we do, we have to look like, you know, if we, we break our own moral code, right? I have my whole life. I have, uh, you know, when I started using, there's stuff that I never started to do. You know, I had an abortion when I was 17. I, um, you know, used drugs further than I ever thought I would. You know, I was shooting up at 30 years old. And so there's stuff that I never, um, ever plan on doing when I would, um, and I broke it, right? So we know that we are messed up. We know that we need the Lord and that we need His um, saving grace. Um, so... Just these last couple of verses in James, I wanted to read uh, about being doers of the word, okay? Because this is the one thing to where this whole, the whole generation of their kids, right? If they would have, um, if they would have been in the word 
severely with their um, with their families, maybe their kids would have ended up driving out. You know what I mean? But um, the one thing is that their kids were not raised in the word because they fell. Okay, and um, it says right here, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away, and once he forgets, once he um, at once he forgets what he is like, what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts. He will be blessed in all he is doing. Okay? In verse 26, he says, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceive, or bridle his tongue, he, his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. You know, and, um, <laughs> man, yeah, religion Intrusion. It's. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh huh. But we get defensive on things when um. Um, the Lord, you know, kind of calls us to it initially. You know, even when uh, I started looking at um, a lot of the Reformed doctrines and looking at that type of stuff with the fact that God chose us, right? It was the, initially my pride was like stirred up, like, no, I'm following the Lord, I'm following the Lord, I'm doing this. And it's, you know, it is the Lord who does it all. You know, he, we still have the choice to, to make, you know, but um, we we are the ones who um, need the Lord to um, open our eyes and to grab us. Because I'm hard-headed. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> yeah, I am hard-headed to say the least. Um, so, in Judges, okay, back in Judges, we're, uh, we're right around, yeah, okay, Israel's unfaithfulness. And so we know... We know, right, huh? Or we know how this, they started, right? And how um, they came into the promised land after their parents had um, died in the wilderness because they uh, continually rebelled against God. And even, even the ones who fo uh, followed the Lord and went in um, with Joshua, they did not listen to the Lord in the sense of, they all had people helping them instead of just going in. <coughs> and then they never drove them out. Okay, we got that. And uh, we... Where did we finish off? Um, oh, verse 14. Okay, so it says, the, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he gave them over to plunderers who plundered them. <laughs> Plundered. Um, and <laughs> and um, he sold them into the land, or he sold them um, into the hand of their surrounding enemies so that they could no longer withstand their enemies. And, you know, it says, whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them for harm. As the Lord had warned and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were in tr terrible distress. So this is the um, now the uh, you could say the consequences. Yeah, and it started where with their parents, right? It started with their parents, and it's a um, because even though they're going to be a snare, right, in their and thorn in their side, they they still did not go and take the high places down. They were like, we're not doing it, you know. And slowly people started marrying them. Slowly people started um, worshiping their gods, you know. And um, worshiping all the false idols in their time always appealed to something of the flesh. Because that's why, you know, they didn't worship a god of soberness or whatever. Maybe some of them did, but um, like in a, in a prideful manner. But uh, most of it was always uh, debauchery, right? 
pretty messed up stuff that they did. Um, so, one of the things I really think uh, of this, because um, I, we're going to go into chapter 2, um, or I mean, I guess, uh, chapter 2, verses 16, how the Lord is going to be able to, the Lord's going to start raising up judges, okay? And so, there is going to be, I believe, let's see, Lord, then let's read, let's read a little bit into it, and we'll see, um, I think the first judge is, um, is it Othaniel? Yeah, something Yeah, Othaniel? Yeah, the O one. Um, so it's verse 16, it says, uh, Then the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hand of those who plundered them. Okay? And um, it says, Yet they did not listen to the judges, for they whored after other gods and bowed down to them. Okay? And it's crazy because when the Lord talks about us going after other gods, He uses a very strong word, whored. Right? Yeah. He uses sexual um, immorality as a, as a, a picture because um, that is something that gets us. Yes, and that's something that, that strong, right? That um, um, someone that is um, beginning to cheat on their spouse and live in adultery is like God um, with us, right? Jesus is the, um, um, the bridegroom. We're the bride. And it's like us whoring after different gods, you know? our own flesh basically we don't have little gods we worship but we might as well you know yeah. as far as a lot of the stuff that we do and um the lord uses a very he uses really strong words against this you know and or against um his people in that way you know and it's something that we can see because it's something i think that gives us a picture of um how the lord's heart breaks for um that type of stuff you know and um yeah 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 exactly hosea yeah hosea is an awesome book to kind of get the picture of uh, and it's all about backsliding all about um you know backsliding and then um you know in coming back to the lord you know and uh um it's it's pretty crazy because i think that we are constantly Man, we are constantly falling in a way of, uh, you know, that the Lord's heart breaks for, like, you know, people that are, you know, widows and, and um, you could say orphans and, you know, the I guess the neglected of society in a way. I really believe that the Lord, you know, is, uh, when you look at the people that was always following Christ and everywhere he was going to eat and to be, I mean, when he went to the only Pharisee, I think I remember him going to the house was Nicodemus. So there, he was always going, you know, with uh, like I can think of that. Is it Zacchaeus, the short guy in the tree? Yep. Yeah. You know, and he was the he would have been above Matthew because he was a chief tax collector, and. Uh, you know, he it, right in front of everybody. He calls and says, "Yeah, I'm coming to your house and eating." And everybody's just like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. And no one. And <laughs> the thing is, is that he was hated by even the Jews because he ripped off the Jews. He basically was looked at as a um, a Roman in a way, almost worse because he was a Jew collecting for the Romans, and the tax collector could add whatever they wanted to add, and um, kind of basically like now. <laughs> Somewhat. Um, yeah. Um, um, in verse 18, it says, uh, Whenever the Lord raised up judges, okay, the Lord was with the judge, and he saved them from the hand of their enemies all the days, all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who afflicted and oppressed them. And remember, they're only getting oppressed because of uh, their disobedience to the Lord and that the fact that all these people that they let live are thorns in their side for the rest, from wherever now that we move on to, this is going to be consistently, you know, a thorn, a big thorn. Um, but whenever the judge died, they turned back and were 
more corrupt than their fathers, going after um, more more corrupt than their fathers, going after the other gods, serving them and bowing down to them. They did not drop any of their practices or their stubborn ways. So this cycle that we're going to see, right, um, when we get in next week in the Judges, it's a constant cycle of. But the thing is, is um, you know how like when um. We, we quit using, and, and it might be a while, and when we start back up, it's like we are worse than before almost, right? And this cycle, they're getting worse. So each of the ones, when the judges die, when they backslide, they're worse than their parents. They're worse than their fathers, it's, which is crazy. It's just crazy because they continue to get worse. And so it says, so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel because... Um, against Israel, he said, because this people has transgressed my covenant that I commanded their fathers and they had not obeyed my voice. He made that covenant with Moses and, um, you know, then again with Joshua and they continued to, um, <laughs> need to go the other way. Um, in verse 21, it says, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died in order to test Israel by them, whether they will take care to walk in the way of the Lord as their fathers did or not. So the people are there. The Lord's not driving them out, right? And so they have, um, they have the thing to where if they know... Okay, the Lord, how powerful He is, right? They, um, there's the, the stories, I'm sure, and from their, um, their parents and whatever was beginning to pass down. When the judges, uh, when the judges were uh, rotating, I guess, or you could sort of say, um, you know, the Lord left, left them, um, left the judges, or I mean, left the, the Canaanites and um, the what is it? The Amorites, the man, there's a whole bunch of ites. And they all, um, the Lord left them all there. But the thing is, is that he, um, the Lord was still there to be worshipped. They are the ones who continue to go after gods, like statues. And the thing is, is ultimately that, that we think like how stupid it would be, but it's um, the flesh. Like we will lie, right? We'll even lie to ourselves and make ourselves think, no, no, you know, and make us think, because you know what, they're doing it, and it seems right, right? These guys, because wide is the rate, right, to destruction, wide. And so it was nothing but backsliding, right, and cycles. And um, it is insane because you think of what the Lord did for, for to get them over to the promised land and how he got them in there, and they still... They still turn. In verse 23, it says, So the Lord left those nations, not driving them out quickly, and he did not give them into the hand of Joshua. So they are there, and um, they're not going anywhere. You know, the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Sidonians, the Hivites, they're all around. And uh, we're going to see in verse 20, it says, This explains why they were still Canaanites during the period when Israel had been faithful. So yeah, even when Israel is faithful, we're going to see that these people are not going to be driven out. Okay? So they're going to have to actually um, get through temptation and all the stuff that's around them because their fathers did not drive them out, right? And um, these people don't leave. So there's going to be idols within their midst. There's going to be all this stuff. And they're going to... Um, have to actually fight against temptation, holding your thoughts captive, not um, giving in to what everybody else is doing. Because you know, like if this was a pie chart, I guess it'd be like, you know, a little sliver of people that are worshiping the Lord and everybody else out in front of the idols, doing whatever they're doing, drinking, getting loaded, eating, feasting, yeah. all that type of stuff. And, you know... Um, I wanted to look at a couple of verses where we close up. Um, 
one of the things, and um, we're going to just look at one of these verses in 2 Corinthians. Um, uh, second. Second Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. And it talks about, you know, the Lord comforting us when we are in our time of need and the stuff that we go through, you know, and the, that the Lord is there, all right? And this is something that uh, I think that, like, it's neglected um, in our church, for one, and it's um, something where um, Christians amongst each other, like, for some reason, we will fight with each other and um, not with... Uh, even the people around us sometimes. Sometimes the stuff that's going on around us, um, we end up giving into and fighting with the people that believe the same thing as us. So yeah, just one, three, and four. I was just going to read these couple things. For, um, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So there's stuff that we go through and the Lord comforts us. The Lord is there with us and the Lord gives us strength to do things that we never could do on our own. You know, I, if it wasn't for the Lord, I would not care about using. I would not care about my family. I would use and do whatever. If I'm going to be dead um, and not exist, then who cares? Um, but this is where the Lord, I really think, um, you know, because it is such a crazy, corrupt world that it's completely um, just gotten worse. Like, you know, as the times are now, pretty much, um, like as the days were Noah, right? Um, during that time, it's, it's wicked. Yeah, it's getting really, really bad. And, uh, you know, what we have to do, this is re really why, like, on Wednesdays, I'm really excited for the morning um, thing that we're going to have and for the evening, you know, that Acts 242, for um, that we are, you know, being uh, going over the Word and um, breaking bread with each other and um, praying together. And having fellowship, you know, that we can encourage each other and strengthen each other because it's very hard to sometimes uh, with our walk, if we are like isolated, you know, we need to uh, read and pray and to spend time with the Lord. We got to have that private time with the Lord and we need to have that fellowship with one another. Another, um, because if not, we will fall. We will, we will fall more um, when we are by yourself steadily if we are not going out and knowing that our same brother and sister is going through the same stuff that we can encourage someone who maybe is just going through something that we did a, a week or two ago or six months ago you know being in some situation that um with like all the hell that i put myself through family through like i um i just hope that the lord you know can bring people to my life that i can you know be an actual um a comfort to and point them to the Lord in a way of like how I used to be completely opposite. You know, people work for me. I would shove drugs down their throat. I'd make them drink, get loaded, do horrible things pretty much. And it was just my, um, you know, kind of my uh, personality in a way. I remember I was only saved for about a, not even a year. I mean, my friend, um, we were drinking one day at lunch for some reason, you know, I, I can't remember why. And I, uh, we ended up going and getting high. And um, his brother, who was coming to church with us, he had only known me since I got saved. And we went over there and it was like, we laid up on the table and he got high with us. And I remember him saying, he was like, man, it was like, it, you just turned into Satan. He was like, I had never seen anybody like you like that. And it's, <laughs> that's what it is. Like when we, um, Satan wants to take, right, what, the Lord is doing with us and he wants to show corruptness and messed up stuff in front of other people. So he wants to show um, our worst side to everybody around us. So everybody goes, yeah, what? they're Christian. They're not any different than us. They're not any different than me. You know, they do this and this and that. And that's why we see the people that are, um, the, like the Puritans talked about, the people that are good in society doing all this stuff and they're like, um, and 
they feel good about themselves because you know I'm not doing this I'm not doing that even though the heart's messed up so when we are stumbling when we have um, you know we all have history and messed up stuff we have stuff we're dealing with now and so when we um, follow the Lord and when we um, begin to walk with him we comfort each other and there's going to be a reason why people will call you will call you will call me will call someone rather than somebody else you know and will ask for help or ask us to pray for something because there's something different, you know? And that difference isn't anything that we do. It's what the Lord does through us. You know, we have to be um, in prayer. We have to be like Acts 2.42. That, that, that verse is what the apostles were doing as the church was growing. It would not have grown like that if they were not fellowshipping together and getting strong together and then going out. And so... That's something I really want to um, start like encouraging in the fact that you know if it, it might be a while for um, a lot of us like start doing um, ministry type of stuff because one of the things I really want to see is just for us to be able to get strong with our foundation because one of the things that really knocked me on my butt was I got saved and went within a couple months or even six, I think it was about six months I jumped right into ministry and uh pretty soon i was just doing stuff and right yeah busy. yep and i was just busy and so when persecutions when tribulation happened what happened i i ended up falling and i pretty much have rolled down at the grand canyon at this point <laughs> um busy. It, was busy. it was my busy that's right and um even though we might be doing stuff that um um might be to deal with the Lord, right? Um, it still can be just an yes. Thing. Yep. It'll be something that we are just doing, like the Pharisees, and we might not even. Um, people might try to speak into their lives, and I know I was very like, whatever, dude. You know, people try to talk to me, and I just like, you know, and <laughs> that's just how we are. And one of the things that I realized, or not, kind of reminded me of last week when I went to the jail. And the Scientology and the other people that were not Christian were like really cool to me. And the one dude who was uh, um, not Randy, it was this other guy from some whatever. Um, he was like, you know, just pissed off that I was, uh, <laughs> that he was pissed off that I was going into the, um, there's no classrooms available. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I just ended up leaving. I was like, oh, I'll get it figured out. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, for some reason, Christians want to bite each other's heads off. You know, I'm doing this ministry. <laughs> you know, and uh, it is so crazy because we will, be, we get crazy. And see, that can be some, become something that um, blocks us from our walk with God and what the Lord is trying to do with us because we're just busy. And the thing is, if we're just busy and doing stuff, it doesn't, matter like when i was getting high i was getting high with this dude in california he was a gangbanger and we bumped it three rolled it you know three wheeled it down or no it was like two wheel i don't know what he did we were like cruising around right and uh me and him we we just smoke a pot all the time and um at lunch and this and that and i remember i gave him a bible and i was like dude i am not a good influence and i i said i'm like totally backslid and i said i did not you know, I was like, here's a Bible. I just told him, I was like, this is, you know, a real deal. I said, I'm just, I'm just an idiot. And uh, anyways, the Lord used that somehow. And like a, um, a year and a half later is when he called me um, two summers ago. And uh, he got saved. And God pulled him out of Watts, okay? This dude lived, uh, um, this area, his area is so crazy. I couldn't even get to his house. And he would meet me. And um, he... <laughs> The Lord plucked him out. I mean, he had a—he was about 27 at times. So he's probably 30 now. He got saved, and I was like, "Man, this dude's never going to be able to pull out." Pulled out. I was like, "Man, it sucks." He, because I remember him telling me he just wanted to get out and move. And um, but he had his gang name from when he was a kid. His dad was an OG. His whole family, everything. And the Lord plucked him out. He's not a gang anymore. He goes into juvie, and it's pretty awesome. See, the Lord used me when I didn't even wasn't even thinking about it. Just like he's prophesied through Caiaphas. When Caiaphas was talking about Jesus, and he said, better for him to die for many than many die for him. Talk about Rome coming in. And Caiaphas had no idea. Caiaphas was evil, right? The Lord spoke to him, prophesied to him. 
he had no idea. Jesus sitting there like, uh huh. Yep. Go ahead, slap me again. So that's the thing is that uh, it's really cool is that um, Jesus will use us in ways that we don't even think. And the stuff that we think that I'm really good at or we know that we, I can do this, I can do that. He's like, no, I don't need you. <laughs> I don't need you in that area. You apparently got it, <laughs> you know. So you got to let the Lord use us. And the main thing is that we have to have unity, you know. And uh, that's why the next month I'm going to go through the, I really, it's in my heart to go through the first like four chapters, I think, of First Corinthians, um, because it's all about unity, and uh, that is something that can um, be amazing. You know, united and us, um, you know, calling each other out when we're starting to struggle, when we are should be doing, um, you know, doing whatever in our walk if we're if we're slipping up. So it can. I think it'll be really, really good to see um, the Lord work in us in different ways encourage each other yeah so that way we can um be together so when people come in here they're just like oh, man you know that the, that the lord is just that he's moving i'm i'm pretty excited because i really think that uh with all this stuff that goes on the lord always uses the least of us you know he uses the in first Corinthians, we'll see he uses the um you know the idiots <laughs> to um do amazing things you know he uses people that we least expect to do awesome things yeah. all right jesus was born in a horse trough so he, what he did is he set the stage for um imitating him and walking um in in his ways is this the opposite of the world it is everything he was a revolutionary in his time Nothing, nobody was like, what do you mean you're a king of what? He didn't look like no nope, he was a Jew. He, I mean, yeah, you know with his life how he was. He um, was not, you know, like some buff Fabio. He just was normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was fit. He, I mean, he, they walked everywhere, right? They went everywhere. And... Um, it's pretty cool because they flipped the world upside down. Jesus took his disciples and they flipped the world upside down. And so I'm, you know, uh, I really think with uh, uh, getting into, you know, uh, like like that first part of First Corinthians and even uh, if we start going through Matthew again on, on the weekends, like go through and see how Christ did um, and how he walked and how his disciples were, you know. And uh, the Church of Corinth.